If you're paying attention to any financial news recently, you know that the bond market is leading the top of the news. Bond yields are surging in the United States. Today is an update for October 2023, and the theme of today's video is going to be buckle up and keep some dry powder. So let's get started. First of all, let's just talk about what's happening in the bond market today. There was an important news release, the ADP jobs report, and you'll see that it's having a negative effect on bond yields, a positive effect on bond prices, if that's what you're worried about. Look at the 30 year, it briefly touched 5%. That is kind of monumental, 5.011%. Of course, it slid back down since as the day has gone on. And if we look over here at all of these bond yields, we'll notice that their yield change are all in the red. They've all gone negative today on this ADP report. What is it that the ADP report had to say? If you're not familiar with ADP, ADP is one of the nations, the United States, leading payroll processors. And because of that, the data that they have within their system can give us an idea of what's happening in the US jobs world. So looking at the report that came out today, 89,000 jobs were added to the US private employment, at least according to ADP. Now that is far less than what was expected. In fact, it was 160,000 that economists expected would be reported. The quote here from the chief economist at ADP, Neil Richardson says, we are seeing a steepening decline in jobs this month. Additionally, we are seeing a steady decline in wages in the past 12 months. That's what got the market excited, causing bond yields to go down, bond prices to go up, and the stock market actually went up a bit today as well. I won't go into all of the details, but if you were to scroll down into this ADP jobs report, you can see a lot of data in here that will give you some ideas of what's happening between small, mid-sized, large companies, and they also give you what is happening by sectors in here. Furthermore, if you go down into their uh, news release, you can actually see the data by location. So, for instance, I live in the South, and the South actually had a negative number of jobs created. Now, the reason why I say buckle up as one of the themes for today's video is because I think we're going to see a lot of these day-to-day -day type of drastic or significant changes in bond yields and bond prices. For instance, just going back in time, the JOLTS report came out earlier this week on Monday. And when that happened, that came in showing that there were a lot more open jobs out there. In fact, it was 9.6 million open jobs, and that was greater than was expected. Obviously, when that happened, the bond prices went down, the bond yields went up that day. And I think we're going to continue to see that. In fact, on Friday, there is an important report coming out, and that will be the non-farm payroll numbers from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. That is expected to produce 170,000 more jobs in the non-farm payroll. That would be down from August, where it was about 187,000. So it'll be interesting to see whether that estimate of 170,000 comes in something close or whether it's going to be significantly less like the ADP report was today. Of course, depending on what happens there, expect the bond yield and prices to change significantly. Next week, expect similar changes in the bond yield and prices depending on the results of two important reports. On October 11th, the producer price index will come in. That's essentially what the manufacturers are paying in terms of prices for the uh, raw materials that they're uh, providing for the goods that they sell. And on the following day, the consumer price index, the CPI, that's the one that gets the most attention. I'm actually expecting inflation to come in running kind of hot that day based upon oil, product, oil prices. All right, the second theme for today is keep some dry powder. Of course, that's actually a reference back to the days when people were using gunpowder in wars. Uh, it was important to keep some dry powder there in order to be able to continue the fight. Now, financially, keeping some dry powder means keeping some cash on hand so that you have the ability to purchase what you want if a good deal comes around. So let's just talk about that a little bit. First of all, I'm gonna to touch on this based upon what are the factors that have been driving up bond yields? 
Actually, there are so many things that are affecting bond yields that I actually couldn't cover them all. I have a list here of a few things, and I'm actually only going to go into depth on one of them. But let's just talk about a few things. First of all, the Fed's balance sheet. They have been reducing their balance sheet. Now, if you don't understand what that means, understand that the Fed, like any other bank, can purchase U.S. Treasuries. In the past, they have purchased these extensively. And because of that, they have managed to keep treasury yields down. They are undergoing a process where they're selling off those treasuries or at least not repurchasing more. In fact, they're taking about $800 billion worth of U.S. treasuries off their balance sheet. Since they are not purchasing those U.S. treasuries, the treasury needs someone else to purchase them and that is contributing towards higher yields on U.S. treasuries. I'm talking about treasury bills, notes, and bonds. Number two, there's that August Fitch downgrade. Of course, that certainly can affect the uh, treasury yields there. They essentially took a step backwards in terms of their credit worthiness. The federal budget deficit, that continues to increase. $2.2 trillion is what Matt Gates was talking about uh, the other day uh, when they were essentially getting rid of Matt McCarthy. Bond issuance by the treasury. The treasury has been issuing bonds and notes and treasury bills at such an increased pace. And that increased pace there, that volume of U.S. treasuries is also driving increased yields. Let's just talk quickly about foreign actors. China. Uh, China's economy is not doing as well. They're looking at a slowdown in, uh, there. Their growth is not as high as expected. And of course, that can have an effect on U.S. treasuries. And then I talked previously about Japan and their bond situation. If you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, go back and watch the video uh, where I discussed bond happenings right after the FOMC meeting on September 20th. All right, the last factor that I want to discuss and go into more depth actually with is something called term premium. If you're not familiar with that term premium, know that that is the extra amount that an investor would expect for holding a long-term bond. Look at it as a two-layer cake. The first layer of the cake would make up what the short-term interest rate is. Essentially, that would be the Fed funds rate, or you could consider it the overnight rate that the Fed provides for banking institutions. The term premium, or the second layer of that cake, is what the investor would expect in addition to that short-term interest rate for holding a bond that will last long, say the 10-year U.S. Treasury. Of course, an investor has no idea what the future will hold and what conditions will be like in five, seven, or 10 years. And for that added risk, they should expect an increased premium. This chart here gives you an idea of what has been happening to the 10-year term premium, at least according to the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. Interestingly, if you go to the St. Louis Fed or the San Francisco Fed, you're gonna start seeing some different numbers here. But according to the way that they calculate the US term premium, this is what has been happening. You'll notice that since about 2010, this term premium really has just been on a decline. There was this uh, brief moment in here for a couple of years where it went up, and then again, we're seeing this decline, but the, the term premium actually just turned positive again last week. You'll see it went up to 0.097%. Now, that's not very much, but this is an important landmark here. The last time it was this way was about two years ago. Essentially, what this graph tells you here is that investors have been willing to accept a very poor term premium or even a negative term premium from long-term U.S. Treasuries. That seems to be changing. In fact, there was a prescient article in the Wall Street Journal back on July 18th, 2023, where it describes a long-term danger lurking in financial markets. Interestingly, this article indicates that the term premium had added an average of 1.5 percentage points to the 10-year yield since 1961. So essentially, the 10-year yield was 1.5% more than what you could get on a very short-term yield, as I described, from the overnight rate or a money market account even. This article also indicated, remember this was as of July 2023, that if that term premium were to come back, 
that 10 year treasuries would jump to 6.1%. Now, obviously, the yield on the 10 year treasury has come up significantly since July. We're going to wrap up this video just talking about where rates might be going. I'm talking about long term rates for notes and bonds here. I don't think the treasury bill rates are going to be changing that much unless interest rates also go up. So there was a post by Bill Ackman on X back on August 2nd. I don't know what to call a post on X anymore. It's obviously not a tweet. Is it an expose? Anyway, this post by Bill Ackman went on to talk about how he expected that inflation was not going back to 2%, but would remain roughly around 3%. And then he describes how he gets to what he expects the 30-year Treasury bond rate to be. So here he describes his reasoning. If long-term inflation is 3% instead of 2%, then we could see the 30-year treasury yield at 3% plus the 0.05% real rate plus 2% term premium or 5.5%. Now that 5.5% is actually less than the 6.1% in that other Wall Street Journal article that I discussed. So potentially even higher than 5.5% for the 30-year treasury. Now back when he made this uh, announcement back on August 2nd. Let's just look at what the Treasury yields look like then. When he sent out that expose, the U.S. Treasury yield on the 30-year bond was way down here at about 4. Point, almost 4.2%. Almost now look at how sharply that has come up. Just since August 2nd, we're looking at the 30-year rate at, this says 4.95% as of today. Of course, it's come down a little bit since then. I think when, Pete, when he made that announcement there on X, people thought he was probably crazy. Now they're probably starting to think maybe there was something to his reasoning. In fact, let's just look at how sharply these rates on the long-term treasury notes and bonds have come up just since September 20th, the last FOMC meeting a couple of weeks ago. Look at how much this 30-year bond has increased just in those two weeks. And look here at the other uh, treasury notes, except for the two year, which really hasn't changed much. Uh, you're, you're seeing some drastic movement in everything longer than that. What's driving this? I think a big portion of it is the term premium that investors inspect. So for that reason, I say keep some powder dry because I think we might continue to see some of these drastic movements like we've seen in just the last couple of weeks. In fact, we might see some of those movements just next week after the PPI and the CPI reports come out. If any of this information was useful for you, please give us a thumbs up. We need that for the YouTube algorithm. In fact, let me say thank you to all of you who have been watching the videos we received the most number of views last month than we've received ever. It was 58,000. I know that might not seem like much. There are plenty of people who get fit more than 58,000 views for just one video, but that was an all time high for us. And so for that, we say thank you. And until next time, as always, you know it, enjoy your investing.